to another LMP Lancaster Online Sports Roundtable. I'm John Walk with colleagues Jeff Reinhardt and Mike Rose. We are fresh out of today's PIAA Board of Directors meeting and thought we'd just uh, break it down for you guys to give you an idea of what the heck just happened, what that means going forward. So, Jeff, I'll kind of let you lead us off the top. Batting first, leading off. Um, okay, just <laughs> off the base, big guy. Uh, uh, you know, I guess the lead. Don't bury the lead. The lead is there will be fall sports. Uh, hello, twenty-five to five vote. Two two board members were not present today. Uh, Thirty of the thirty-two were there and voted. It was twenty-five to five, and the people who voted no were the people I figured would school board, uh, principals, school administration. Those folks voted no. District 7, Whippeal voted no, and District 8 voted no, but all the other 25 voted yes. There will be fall sports. Uh, teams around the state can start practicing as early as August 24th, which is what, Monday? Yeah, uh, it's Monday, my man. Monday, uh, unless your league already voted, like the LL, to push back, you may start on Monday. LL, LL is now... Uh, Golf, I think, practices the 24th. They start their matches on the 27th. PDAC for football is August 31st. Practice for everybody else is September 4th. Games will be September 22nd. Football will start uh, the 18th, 19th weekend. So teams can keep practicing for now under the health and safety plan. Uh, but that's the big that's the big news. That's the takeaway. There will be sports. How about that in Pennsylvania this fall? And Mike, now that, okay, PIAA says we can go forward with sports, that, that really means now it's it's basically up to individual school districts as to proceed as normal, right? Which it always was. Always was. I mean, I mean, it's, it's, um, uh, I, I'm, I'm amazed at people who are <laughs> determined to not understand how governing is done so yeah. that they can bitch about it. I mean, that's the reason they don't want to think it through and, and try to understand it. But it, it, this was always the case. Uh, uh, um, but, you know, it's a governing body. The PIAA is a governing body, and, and they, they governed uh, uh, appropriately. Although I thought, I thought Penn Live's reporting was kind of interesting. It suggests that their, their uh, dialogue with the governor's office may have been a little more extensive than, 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 uh, than they portrayed it to be, which is kind of disappointing. But the bottom line is that the PIAA has fought really hard to make this happen, and, and, and today they did. I think a, a couple of things that jumped out. Um, Lombardi said they're going to monitor the fall season, and if there's areas in the state where not a lot of teams are playing and opt out, they will explore every option to give those fall kids a fall season later in the school year. So you could have a county, I don't know, somewhere where only maybe three teams are playing out of 12. Well, you could you could see those other nine teams that didn't get to play. You might see them have a football season in April. And they actually passed a motion, a motion. They formally passed a motion to, to give themselves that uh Mm. ability and it's going to be and it it could even factor in if there's areas of the state where individual schools just yeah. decide to 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 drop out so a certain league doesn't have enough teams to play a real season like they they only have three teams left or something that are playing they yeah. might they might fix that somehow or adjust that uh, uh somehow and obviously they have not begun to look at a state championship tournaments in any of the fall sports because they don't know how many teams are going to be playing. They don't, I mean, they can't even start on that yet. And the other thing is spectators. Uh, as of now, the, this rule from this, from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, 250 people at outdoor gatherings, 25 at indoor, that still applies, yes. which means that not very many spectators are going to get to get in to see these games unless that changes, unless they can negotiate with the governor's office to, um, uh, you know, to get some kind of special dispensation. And I, I don't know that the governor's office is going to be all that disposed to go down that road after the way they've kind of been jerked around. And there's no. not, to, uh, I mean, I don't. No. Um, the, um, um, the liability issue came up and Lombardi said they will defer to the Department of Health if you have somebody test positive on your team and then it'll be up to your school's protocols how you're going to handle it. Um, 
pans in the stand. Well, yeah, but that's an insurance issue. That's, that's insurance. insurance. That they don't have it. They're, I don't think that no. sure. I don't think that kind of insurance exists right now. Something's going to have to be. That needs fixed. Definitely. For sure. Definitely that needs fixed. A lot of people have to scramble right now because yep. um, you can you can go play sports on Monday morning. So, you know, if you're in a league or a district that, that you're on time and you can go Monday morning and start and your schools are going to have to decide really fast. Lombardi told us on Tuesday at the oversight athletic meeting, he said he would like two immediate family members to be able to get into games um, for safety reasons. I mean, you know, if your kid snaps an ankle at a field hockey match, mom or dad should probably be there. So and they should be able to do that for soccer Cross country field hockey. Field hockey you would yeah. think you would. the the indoor sports, which is volleyball in this case, and tough. football. That's going to be tough. That's going to be tough. And and I think that's important to point out. Uh, for instance, uh, was just on the school district of Lancaster board meeting on Tuesday, and one of the board members asked, "What's the deal uh, with transportation? Are we going to allow parents to be able to transport their kids to games?" And McCaskey Athletic Director John Mitchell said, "That's always been an option for parents, regardless." Yeah. It is. And it makes you wonder. Okay, well then. You don't want to make those parents drive, I don't know, little Joey, little Susie to a game, possibly with a teammate or two, drop yeah. them off, and then not be able to stay and watch the game if spectators aren't allowed in. Um, I know there's school districts, and that's a whole other prong that we got to get to now is uh, how they're going to be able to live broadcast these games, uh, oh, which is another problem. story for another day. Uh, Jeff, I'm wondering now, too, in addition to covering – or keeping on top of the upcoming school board meetings across the county and LL League, the the five nay votes from yeah. today's PIAA board meeting, I wonder if we should also be monitoring like those individual districts. Is District 7 going to come back and hold a vote now as to whether or not they're going to play? It, it makes me wonder if that's on the board. Well, and that's Allegheny County and Allegheny County. I, I don't think they would decide as a district on that. I think, again, it's individual school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think, I mean, I don't know that it's a good question, but I saw uh, Mike white from Pittsburgh and Chris Harlan from Pittsburgh tweeted out today, the, the Allegheny County department of health said teams can play outdoors. You can have football games, you can have field hockey games, but they yeah, said, I saw that spectators too. there. No, no spectators. And, uh, again, you know, we should point out here, though, the school district of Philadelphia, which is a humongous operation. Gigantic. gigantic. They're not playing fall sports. Nope. They're not playing until uh, January 1st. I and mean, I had a lot of people ask me on the Twitter machine today, well, if they let, if they're going to let them play, can these leagues come back? And I said, well, they probably have it in the small print that they're, you know, they can change their mind and come back and play. But I think the <laughs> leagues and the teams that already opted out, I don't think, I don't think they're going to come back. Even I, I would doubt that. Yeah, I agree with you about that. Right? Well, Here's an interesting piece of that, though. Some of the best bas some of the best high school basketball in the country yeah. is played in the school in the school district of Philadelphia in District yeah. 12. Are they going to start basketball on January? I mean, I realize this is way down the road and, and complete speculation, but are they going to start basketball, you know, three weeks or a month after everybody else has started basketball? Who knows? That would be weird, <laughs> well, wouldn't it? I mean, like, people are like, I mean, it's workable. That's work. I'm not saying that's a huge sure. deal, but people are like, interesting. When's basketball going to start. How about spring sports? And I'm like, just let them let them figure out the fall. You yeah, know, it's, that's, it's you know, really week to week right now. Well, it's yeah, it is because they they knock on wood. They might have to pull the plug in a week. And who knows? Yeah, they might. Nobody they knows. Might. That that's really might. now moving forward. Now now more than ever. How many times have we said that in the last six months? Now more than ever, you better follow your health and safety plans because if anybody gets sick, if there's an outbreak. You know, whether you believe in the data or masks or any of this or not, if there's a if there's an outbreak and they got to cancel games and leagues and seasons, we're in big trouble. And and I think that's the point here is we've seen a lot of questions. Of, OK, if a player tests positive, a team shuts down for 14 days, um, then what? And I think we'll just have to figure that out as we go here. As far as does does a team eat a forfeit loss? Do they reschedule that game later in the year? Does the school district then come back and and shut all things down? I, it's kind of it's too early to say right now. Yeah, I think the three of us can kind of breathe a little sigh of relief. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One day at a time. I'm just right. uh, I'll take today as a victory, and and we'll see what happens tomorrow. Really, is small victories opinion. are good. Uh, I think I think on the horizon now, there's going to have to be a lot of scrambling 
We need to look at who's going to opt in, who's going to opt out. We I definitely to- have to do that LL golf preview. Uh, you better that's, get over that. That's now urgent. That's now we urgent. Of course, on Monday morning, practicing, chipping and putting. <laughs> yeah. we, uh, we need to look at who's going to opt in and opt out. And, and if people opt out, that's going to change schedules again, might change playoff schedules again. Um, um, and we'll monitor the fans if they're going to let anybody in. And I've been telling people now for weeks, it's going to be different. It's going to look completely different. And odds are they're probably not going to let you in. Mom and, and- dad, maybe – Rabid Barons fan, I doubt you're going to get in. Yeah, that's that's I true. I think that's probably true. We don't know, but I think that's probably uh, I think that's probably true. And you know, no McCaskey, maybe right? I mean, John Ware, uh, School District of Lancaster is going to vote September 8th as to whether or not they're going to allow their fall sports teams actually play games against opponents from outside of their school district. Right now, they're just giving the thumbs up to let them practice, and then. We'll find out in, what, 17 days, 18 days? Um, uh, What's your read? I was following you the other night, and it seemed like they might have had the votes. uh, My read is I would be surprised if McCaskey plays this fall. I could be completely wrong. Um, Just from the way some board members are leaning, uh, they're concerned. And even the superintendent said, uh, you know, it'd be fine if you guys would play against each other, but it's when you start playing against teams from outside of the school district where I get concerned. And there's a couple, a few board members who feel that way. And I, uh, I, I think so. I, I kind of wanted to bring this up too, and not to be harsh on school board members. I'll say this at the top. I know they have a lot to do. I know a lot of them are working full time jobs, but hey, you're a school board member. It's a service to your community. There are hundreds of kids playing sports. They have moms and dads. They have brothers and sisters. This is an impacting hundreds of lives. I think it behooves school board members across the county, and across the LL to become familiar with the health and safety plans that the athletic teams have been following for the last seven weeks as they've been easing into to this transition now and also familiarize yourself with the 26 page return to play plan that the PIAA approved what three weeks ago now as far as how to proceed safely uh, within these constraints as far as a fall sports season the reason I say that is because there's just been a lot of questions from board members that I've seen granted it's a small sample size I've watched E-Town School District Lancaster the last two weeks but I just some questions I hear and it's like are you guys not familiar with this health and safety plans yeah. that you just passed within the last month? Did you not? I hear you. Yeah, that's a good um, point. If they're not, if, if they're not well versed in that, that's that's pretty and, weak. Right, and hopefully school board members, you know, are doing their due diligence and taking a look at that because now they have really important decisions to come up here in the next two to three weeks, um, and and we'll see what comes of that. And I think that's kind of the next uh, domino that we have to follow here. Right. Um. Mike, the uh, the athletic oversight committee from Tuesday uh, meeting. Yeah. Can you just kind of give us a summary of what happened there? Well, um, it, it was a pep rally for let's play sports. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, you know, I love Scott Martin. I, I, I'm not sure that committee even needs to exist. And, and I'm not sure what they were doing yesterday. That was really an annual scheduled meeting where Bob Lombardi goes to those guys and gives them like an annual report. That really was not that would have happened if there was no pandemic. Uh, um, and it is pretty cool that Scott Martin, who I like a lot, is is now the chairman of the committee. And and Thomas Haynes, the the wrestler from, uh, from Solanco, is going to be an administrative aide to, to that committee. He works up there now. Uh, and, and he was an intern in Martin's office. So that's pretty cool. I mean, I I like those guys. But uh, but um, that was just that was just a pep rally. You know, I think they right. trotted out like a dozen people and they were all, you know, well spoken and had their statements prepared. Mark Evans, Mannheim Township football coach was on and he was great. But, you know, 10 to 12 people basically sat there in front of their Zoom camera and said, you know, please let us play. And you a know. couple of those were filibusters. I mean, my God, I, I was about ready to, that guy from North Allegheny, if I could have driven to North Allegheny and quickly, <laughs> I would have smacked him upside the head. But uh, that was uh, way, 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 way too long. But but uh, yeah, that's what it was. That's what All it right, was. Jeff, can you, uh, I know you kind of said this at the top, but just a quick refresher, the LL League start dates for fall sports, what those are, what are we looking forward to now? Golf. 
Monday the 24th, they can practice. I believe the first matches are August 27th. 27th, yep. No, so that's next week. What is that, Wednesday? Wednesday they'll have Thursday. matches. Thursday. Yep. Thursday. Okay. Uh, four left. Um, heat Act. And they, they made a Heat Act uh, motion vote thing today. Uh, in the spirit of Heat Act, uh, if you can't get all of your Heat Act practices in, they want you to get in as much as possible. So they're not making you go five hours every day for five days. You can go three hours uh, just for this year because it's so different. So Heat Act will be the week of August 31st. Everybody else, September 4th. Football, if it's on, the first football game is Thursday, September 17th, the Jenkintown Drakes visiting Peckway Valley in a non-league game. Uh, and then Friday the, the 18th, Friday the 18th will be the first full Friday night of football. Um, and then all the other fall sports will start Tuesday the 22nd. Obviously, truncated seasons. Uh, I was at a soccer practice actually this morning, and the word around soccer is they're going to play a 12-game season pretty much just head-to-head -head section and maybe a crossover. We've seen the football schedules. It'll be truncated. Less, less teams will make the LL playoffs. Fewer teams will make the district playoffs. Uh, and then we'll see how PIAA handles these state playoffs later. And, Mike, I think the word was Thanksgiving, right? They want to be done by Thanksgiving. They want to be done by Thanksgiving, yeah. So they can get it done, get it in, and see, see where, the winter, where the winter will be. Right. And by the way, just in regards to uh, cross or uh, fall schedules for cross country boys and girls for LL league schedules. Anyway, the revised ones, mm -hmm. um, I'm looking at them now. It looks like September 24th, September 28th, uh, October the 1st, October the 6th and October the 13th. So that's five meets all in like a four week span, which I know is a ton of running, but I think it's worth pointing out here that the LL League does not have any parameters that a runner has to participate in X amount of meets in order to qualify for the LL League meet. Um, although the LL meet, the parameters there are still TBD. Um, and then the District 3 meets, it's a top 10 runner from uh, from each classification or a top 10 runner from the league meet goes to districts. Um, so there might be, I'm hearing there might be a 2A league race, a 3A league race, and then the top 10 runners move on from there or something like that to districts. I'm still kind of working out those details, but it's it's worth pointing out here because I had some questions as far as, man, that's a lot of running in a short time. Well, runners aren't necessarily going to be required to run each of those races in those four weeks. So uh, perhaps some some coaches can sit out there. I just hope we are, we're able to kind of get that far. It seems like September, what did I say, 22nd, 24th? Um, September 24th is kind of a far off date here. It's a whole month and three days, but hopefully we can kind of get there. Um, I think this means we need to get cracking on the football tab. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Truth be told, I've, I basically have been holding off on doing cross country previews and football previews for me anyway, until we got to this date and we actually knew we were going to play. Sure. Um, now we do have the schedules done, fortunately. So now it's kind of time to start really getting cranking on this next stuff. It is. It's a good day. Good day for the kids. Yeah. Uh, there's still a lot of leery people out there, you know, and there's going to be schools maybe in our backyard that opt out. So be ready for it. But I think it's a victory today for, you know, the kids and, and athletes and the health and safety plans of the schools and sticking to those and, and, and staying healthy. So that that won the day today to me. Awesome. Any last words from you, Mike? Peace out. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well hey uh we're going to kind of try to come back next week we're going to try to find a pair of ll fall female coaches um uh, just to kind of pick their brains like we did a week ago with football in regards to hey what's your sport doing what is this fall going to look like for you so look out for that uh for jeff reinhardt mike Urs, i'm john walk thanks to you guys for watching we'll catch you next week See you.